Hello, this is Geotech Len, and today I'll be talking about Manjaro GNOME and why I use that as my main Linux daily driver OS here. And to give you more insight into why I use it, it doesn't hurt for me to tell you how I even got into Linux in the first place. Um, so like back in 2010-ish, I got introduced to Ubuntu and I just liked it because it was like this alternative OS. Um, nothing in particular made me choose it. I just wanted to try something new. So I didn't really think there was other OS. So I was like, hey, why not try Ubuntu? Um, I, I had a teacher of mine and, and tell me the benefits of it. Um, you know, it was open source. Uh, I didn't really understand it then, but from what little I did understand it, it seemed like an interesting idea. So I tried it. I liked the interface a little bit, you know, had that Mac or Apple uh, OS feel to it. It definitely did look and feel like a free OS at the time. Uh, because it's not like the OS was too impressive, but I was like, hey, this is a free OS. That's pretty cool. And so I stuck with Ubuntu for a good while. I think I was using the GNOME 2 interface at that time. Um, and then the biggest news I was hearing about it was when it switched to the Unity desktop, people were split. I personally liked the Unity desktop because it had that more modern, elegant feel to it. So I, I was a, I stuck with Ubuntu there. But with that, when that split happened, that's when people started using Linux Mint. So that was around, you know, 2010, 2011. And I was still stuck with Ubuntu, but I kept hearing a lot about Linux Mint. It was starting to become the more popular one, so I tried it. It was my daily driver for about a year on my my laptop and at that time I also had bought an a system 76 PC you know or laptop obviously pre-installed with Ubuntu then installed Linux Mint Linux Mint became my daily driver for about a year and so I was perfectly fine you know it's it's perfect if unless you're not like gaming or using a Windows specific app then it's, it does everything that Windows does and so I started liking the idea more of like uh, open source and um, just overall the Linux community and um, and so you know I've mostly stuck with Linux Mint and then um, I did switch to Ubuntu a bit like back and I kind of went back and forth uh, but I mostly then started leaning towards Ubuntu again just because I like their their Unity desktop you know one of the rare few I guess but then I was on Windows again for a good while just because I needed it for certain apps. Although at the time I didn't think those apps were available on Linux, but yeah, so I was on Windows back again for a while. And then when I first built my PC just like last year, you know, I, I was going to mostly stick around with Windows, but then I thought, all right, let me try going Linux again. And I finally did. I obviously stuck with Ubuntu and I was pretty happy with uh, that uh, for a good while and you know I was always going to keep Linux in the back of my mind but I did then think to myself um, or actually when I first when I bought my 4k TV I was like why can't I get 4k 60 Hertz on Linux and started exploring I was hearing that uh, my RX 580 AMD GPU was um there were still fixes coming for the kernel so kernel version 4.15 and i was like okay that may fix the issues i was having um obviously with the official uh amd drivers on ubuntu 16.04 i thought that would fix it so i went to that i went back to 16.04 and installed the the actual uh, official AMD drivers and that did fix the sound which was nice but it still wasn't really giving me consistent 4k 60 hertz the weird thing is every once in a while when I log in I somehow get 60 hertz even with um, even when I was on Solus for a while and um, so that prompted me to thinking all right I need the Linux 4.15 kernel so uh, I switched to it and um, I had switched to 17.10, the audio wasn't working, switched to 4.15, the audio started working, cool. 
I expected the f uh, 4K 60 hertz to work, and it didn't, uh, at least not on a consistent basis. And uh, so I kept installing the later versions of 4.15. Boom, my kernel EFI or my EFI bootloader was um, uh, filled up, and I started having issues. So that's when I got into Solus, and that's like the precursor that got me into Manjaro. Um, but yeah, Solus was a rolling release model, so I would get the kernel, the later kernel versions of it. So that's what attracted me to it. It also was a very user-friendly desktop from like, from what you can see on their site. You know, I was like, wow, this is user-friendly. It seems like it was independent. So it wasn't like, you know, a derivative of Ubuntu, even though I was happy for the most part with Ubuntu, I just thought it was cool. So this is even more independent. And, you know, I like that they had their Patreon here. And, you know, you can view how much they they want for their budget here um, and you can kind of just see what they're going what they're doing and so I just liked overall everything with their how they model things and I still do I mean it's still my 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 second option um, and it could be my first you know it just depends on like at the time what I need and what they're doing I wouldn't mind switching back back and forth between Manjaro and Solus but since I had issues with the kernels and needing the later kernel versions um, obviously something attracted me to Manjaro and I'll get to that in a moment. But one thing I do want to mention is that on Solus, the main reason though, why I even started looking into Manjaro was that, uh, under like Twitter or on their social media, they weren't really posting too much. Yeah. Every once in a while they'll post an update, which is, which I appreciate, but even on their blog, which they do somewhat keep up. Yeah, sometimes they can go months without reporting anything, so that kind of got me feeling like, hey, you know, I feel like, you know, what's going on with Solus? And I started hearing a little bit of how the the founders was trying to, or thinking of giving Solus away to like another company or another organization, like kind of not wanting to work on it anymore. I don't know if that's still going to be the case. I hope it is, and you know, I want to see them continue improving. They, they are going to improve their store here. So that, that's pretty cool. But yeah, so, and I didn't know like uh, that Manjaro had a much better community. So that kind of got me curious about them. I know on DistroWatch, they were a little bit more popular than Solus. So that kind of also, uh, I kept that in the back of my mind. So I installed this on a virtual box just to test it out because I got curious enough. And one thing I did notice that was like, uh, so refreshing was that I noticed this kernel manager here and after dealing with the kernel versions and wanting to get the, the later versions of kernels this made me really happy this was like the, the main thing that kind of got me to Manjaro is that I can switch easily like installing an app to the latest kernel obviously I probably wouldn't play around with bleeding edge but I was pretty happy sticking with um, this version of the kernel the stable a version um, and so I felt that I had a lot more control than just on Solus waiting for whenever they push out an, uh, the update I can just really install to the later kernel when I need to here and so that was the main thing um, the other neat thing is that by default um, I did get this little menu here as well so I know um, with GNOME it's definitely geared to be more tablet uh, friendly so, and I, and I do prefer accessing these apps here, right, like this. So I consider this like the tablet version of accessing your apps, but it still has the option if you want to go more old school, more desktop uh, friendly version to access your apps. This is still, they have this as an option by default. And I know on GNOME, I'm pretty sure you can get this menu working there by tweaking it. But the fact that they have it by default is re really good. Now, um, in terms of the apps that are available, first of all, the package manager is it's not as user or it's not, not not as user friendly and nice as Solus, although they're pretty similar anyways. Um, but that's not really a big issue for me as long as I can get the apps. That's the important part. Um, by default, searching their repositories, they don't have a lot of apps that I could get on Solus like PCSXR. Um, 
something like I don't know. I'm a I write screenplay, so something like Trellby is not available here by default. Um, but if there are a lot of the apps, or most of the apps that weren't available in their repositories. I can just get using Yao Arch GUI here, so I can. It's still pretty easy. I know it's the command line, but don't get too intimidated. It's pretty straightforward. You just search and install. Type in the the app you want to install. And then you can select what version of the app you want to install. And yeah, I kind of had to tweak a little bit to get these things to actually install, like downloading the base level packages. But it's not too crazy advanced, you know. So I got most apps, although surprisingly, the only thing that Solus does better, I guess, is more, a lot of the apps were available by default without having to do anything too fancy to get installed. Um, the only other thing with regarding packages is that for whatever reason snaps don't work even though they should I get this error I know I could probably fix it or it's fixable but I don't want to really tweak too much uh, on my settings here I want to keep it somewhat beginner friendly user friendly so that's my only complaint that I can't get snaps to install when on Solus they work perfectly fine so again sometimes you know Solus does a few things better than Manjaro but it was more like overall when draw those more what I need. And so that's how I made my journey, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, to Solus, to Manjaro. And so they're both rolling releases. And the funny thing is that a lot of people say that the Linux community is fragmented, but I think that's somewhat misleading. It is fragmented, but eventually certain things become the norm. So when I made the transition from I actually made the transition from Solus Budgie to Solus Gnome, and then from Solus Gnome to Manjaro Gnome. The transition was pretty smooth because obviously I'm, um, they're both using the, the Linux kernels. Um, they're both using the Gnome desktop environment. And even the icons by default, you get these, I think it's called like Paprius or something. So it, did, it feels exactly like Solus and almost like for the 90% of the part I'm gonna be using it, right? And so that transition was easy and it kind of makes me realize how, yeah, Linux can be fragmented, but eventually certain things become more popular than others and it ends up having a uh, feeling uniform in many ways. And so I'm pretty happy with Manjaro GNOME so far. This is probably going to be my main OS for a good while. You know, I try not to distro hop too much. Um, but speaking of distros, Another reason that kind of tipped the scale to making Manjaro my daily driver is on. Oh, I clicked on an ad here. And I can't go back now. All right, so part of it was that even though I noticed Manjaro was a little bit more popular than Solus, I still felt that, oh, it's not too popular, too, that much more, it was like in fourth place. But what tipped it is I checked here and I noticed Manjaro was number one now, so I think it's becoming the more popular one the past six months, so it, it made me all right. I, I got to give Manjaro a try and try it out. And, uh, and so far, I'm happy with it. And like I said, I, just because I'm happy with it, and this is my main OS, um, Solus OS is still a, a good second option, a second best option. I hope they continue working on it as well. That way, I kind of have a, a backup plan or you know, a competitor to Manjaro. Um, I think it's always good to have and Manjaro, some things also that I should mention. Steam is, default, is installed by default. Um, Citra works for whatever reason. I was having issues with Citra working actually on both Manjaro and Solus, but for some reason on Manjaro, you got in it to work. Solus, I couldn't. Even though Solus has more apps def uh, installed by default, or at least available in their repo. So. I couldn't get M64 Pi, the, the GUI for MUPIN, to work. So again, even Manjaro does a few things with the apps better than Solus does. But yeah, other than that, those are my reasons why I use Manjaro GNOME. And I think it's the best Linux OS. And I think you guys should check it out. Now, obviously, there's the KDE version of the desktop. So you don't have to use GNOME if you don't like it. Um, there's avail more available options as well and so other than that guys if you found this video helpful please give it a like share subscribe 
and I will see you guys next time.